Greetings, my name is Chris Ralph, and I'm going to be giving this talk here about dry washing for gold. I'm hoping that uh, this is uh, something that's going to help you guys find more gold and know your dry washer better and have a little bit more confidence in it. It's a, an educational program that I give uh, when I go speak to various clubs and other groups. So in this presentation, we're going to talk about what is a dry washer? How does a dry washer work? We're going to talk about the different kinds of dry washers that are available. And then we're going to talk about something that's really important that a lot of guys don't know, even guys that, uh, that do dry washing. How do dry washers, how well do they work? You know, I mean, a lot of guys don't have confidence because they're working dry. And we're going to talk about that and where to dry wash, selecting a spot. Of course, that is the main thing. you got to get in the right place. No matter how good your dry washer is and how good your techniques are and the secrets you might know, if you're dry washing a whole lot of dirt that doesn't have any gold in it, then you're not going to get any gold. That's the whole big thing. It's a prospecting tool. You get the gravels that have a lot of gold and your dry washer will help you recover them. To talk about the advantages and disadvantages so let's get started okay the basic dry washer this is an old dry washer that i owned years ago it's still in use though i sold it to a friend he still uses it the basic idea is there's a screen and a small hopper on top and then that feeds down to a riffle tray underneath and then underneath the riffle tray instead of having a solid uh, piece of material like you'd have with um, with a sluice box instead you have cloth that air can come up through it this type is a bellows type but there's some that have a continuous blow of air now dry washers have been around a long time they've long been popular in the desert but they're good elsewhere too as long as the soil is dry and not too dirt clawed uh filled you know as long as the soil doesn't have too much clay in it uh they're they're good in a lot of places and they were developed in the late 1800s and have been used all across the desert, Southwest, uh, Mexico, Australia, and other places, places where it's dry. So early day dry washers were all homemade. And the some are still homemade, but in, in the current years, most are manufactured. But the average prospector can still build one. It's very possible. They did in the old days, and, and you could too. On the right here is some plans that I drew up for a dry washer that I was going to build. I actually never built it, but, uh, you know, you can draw up uh, plans and, and do one yourself if that's what you want to do. A dry washer separate gold from dry washer from gra dry gravels using blowing air rather than flowing water like a regular sluice box. This is the riffle tray of one of my little dry washers. And as you can see, it looks like a regular sluice box tray except the black material in between the riffles that's cloth so the air can come up through now dry washers work better than most prospectors think they do they can recover some pretty fine gold you can see in the picture here that the some of the gold in this picture is a pretty darn small uh, the buffalo nickel is exactly the same size as a regular modern u.s nickel and you can see the, some of those little pieces of gold are really tiny. And this is a what I would say is a good dry washing uh, day's, day's result. I got, uh, this is a, I don't know, around two penny weight or tenth of an ounce. Now there's two different main types of dry washers. The motorized blower type with a gas engine. And they have uh, a little blade that where the air comes in at the bottom of the dry washer underneath the cloth. There's a little... Um, fan blade type of thing and it's purposely weighted to be out of balance and when that thing swings around as, as the uh, as the air blows in it makes that whole bottom tray vibrate and that's what helps the gold settle down as it's going across the riffles it'll settle down and get captured and as you can see the bottom tray looking at this picture uh, the front end there's a kind of a hook swing thing and the back end it, that, that's hold is actually on a kind of a spring type mount so it can move up and down so this is loose loosely mounted so that it can vibrate as the air moves through now some of the smaller blower types actually run on a leaf blower unit and you can buy them as a combined dry washer and a vacuum system and these are really cool because 
The vac system you can use to vacuum up cracks on bedrock and that kind of thing, which is where the gold is generally going to be in a lot of cases. So the combination uh, vac sucker unit and dry washer, that's a pretty cool uh, type of arrangement. And uh, a number of manufacturers make these. Uh, the second type or other type that's not a continuous blow is what they call a bellows type. And that first picture that I showed you was a bellows type. This is another bellows type. This is the current dry washer that I use. It uh, basically has a, a, a wheel that spins around and it makes a bellows go up and down underneath. And as the bellows go up, it puffs air through and it makes the thing run and, and it goes it basically puff 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 and a little bit as the bellows close there's a little bit of a shake to it and uh, that's how it works to settle the gold and capture the gold it works pretty well um, some of the newest dry washers have kind of rake pins to distribute the gravel flow so that the gravel as it's going down the dry washer is um, evened out and spread fully across the sluice area the ripple tray now, dry washing is faster and, and more efficient than dry panning or winnowing, which is a lot of what the old timers did sometimes uh, in dry desert areas. They would do dry panning and, and dry panning and winnowing. They're not very efficient and that takes a long time. You can spend 15, 20 minutes going through a single pan, whereas if you put that in your dry washer, you'll go through that same amount of material in 5 or 10 seconds. So, a lot faster. Operating a dry washer properly. You want to keep it flowing evenly, but not to overload it. This is, is kind of overloaded. It's too much material. Uh, as you can see on the bottom side of the upper piece, not the piece with the riffles, but the piece that's turned up, there's a, a bit of aluminum there, and it's kind of a, a control. So you can control how fast the material feeds through. You don't want to swamp it and bury all the riffles, and you, but you don't want to let all the, uh, the cloth show through. There's actually a problem. If you let too much cloth show through, what will happen is all the air will go over the unexposed part of the, the cloth, and you won't get any air blowing the gravel and blowing the dust and dirt to, to move it along down the riffle tray. So there's kind of a balance, and, and as you operate, you'll, you'll get used to it. But keep the gravel flowing evenly and don't overload it. And you don't want it to run a long time uh, with nothing going through. That's, that's one of the advantages of this bellows type is you can easily turn it off and on, whereas if you have a blower motor, um, it's, it's a lot more work to turn it off and on. One of the other secrets of successful dry washer operations is to grind up the dirt clods. The clods are what really cause the problem with a dry wash recovery. You can, you can imagine, you know, a dirt clod the size of a pea with a little tiny flake of gold in it. Well, the average weight of that dirt clod with a little tiny flake of gold, it, it's not heavy. And so the little tiny dirt clod will roll right on through your dry washer and into the tailings pile and you will have lost that little flake of gold. On the other hand, if you grind up the dirt clods and uh, and they go in as, you know, all ground up fine sand, then actually dry washer is pretty good at capturing those little fine flakes. But like I say, you have to grind up the dirt clods. And I'm going to show you what what you can what problems you can have if you don't grind up your dirt clods. Now check this out. This is a dirt clod that was actually recovered with a metal detector. But if you look closely, you can see this dirt clod is just filled with little picker nuggets. Now you can imagine if you let a dirt clod like this roll on through, you'd really be losing a lot of gold. In fact, the guy who found this with his metal detector broke that dirt clod up. And as I recall, there was something around a, a quarter of an ounce of gold in that dirt clod. So, you know, Bust up your dirt clods really well when you dry wash because if you let them go through as chunks and clods of, of clay and dirt, you're going to be losing gold. Avoid the dust too. You know, there are diseases that are associated with breathing dust. Uh, there's uh, 
various fungus things that you can, you know, in, inhale. And you don't want to do too much of that. And so when I get uh, get going with my dry washer, I try to stay upwind and avoid the, the dust as best I can. And that way I'm, I'm not breathing any more of it than I have to. You can see that some spots make more dust than others. And in fact, the uh, dust thing is one of the advantages of these little bellows type. The continuous blow type tend to make a lot more dust. Uh, whereas the bellows type, yeah, sure, they make dust, but maybe not as much dust as the bellows. And so anyway, avoid the dust where you can. Now, advantages of dry washers. The puffer types are actually very light and portable. That's another advantage of those bellows type ones. Um, they all get good recovery on dry gravels as long as you don't have a, a clay and dirt clod problem. It can actually be as high as 90%, 97% of what you would get with the sluice. I'm going to show you that in just a minute and let you see what I, what I did. Uh, they're easy to operate. You just shovel in and screen them. Once you get them set up so they're flowing right, uh, it is just a shovel and screen type of material. It's amazing for cleanup of nugget patches. We're going to talk about that. I'm going to show you that too. And they're great for working small spotty deposits where, you know, you don't want to bring in a lot of heavy equipment. The disadvantages include that the dirt needs to be fully dry. You can't uh, run wet material through them. I tell people if you can grab a, a fistful of your material and push it down in your hand, and then when you open your hand back up, if the material stays in a dirt clod, it's too wet. If you open your hand back up and the material just relaxes and, and goes back to being uh, loose dirt, then it's plenty dry enough. Uh, dry washers, like I say, can be a very dusty operation. The less clay, the better. Um, you know, the more sandy the material is, the lower the dust you're going to have, the less clods that you're going to have that hurt your recovery. So, But you don't get to choose what material looks like. I, I'm just saying that the less clay, the better. Um, it does uh, does not get the, the bulk of the very fine dust size gold. I mean, literally, if you were to take a sluice box and, and you had water and you run uh, material through the sluice box, see the rolling around the sluice tends to break up the dirt clods and also does a, a better job of recovering that really fine 30 mesh and smaller kind of gold the dust size stuff. The motorized blower types can be heavy. I mean, some of those, you know, big blower types, uh, it, it, it takes multiple trips to carry them in. And guys don't want, you want to be able to drive to where you're going and, you know, not have to carry hundreds of pounds of equipment over hill and dale to get to a spot. Whereas the blower types, you can, you know, carry them over hill and dale pretty easy. Um, and they can be stopped by rainy weather. I mean, like I said, uh, the material needs to be dry. You can be planning a prospecting trip and get out there and maybe get started and suddenly you get rain and unexpected, you know, thunder showers and things. Uh, it can be put an end to your dry washing. Now, part of the whole goal with uh, finding places to dry wash is to find places with small, uh, un- uh, basically small unworked plaster deposits that are still in place. Uh, there are places that I found that are near quartz outcrops, um, hillside plasters, the alluvial plasters, and even places along streams as long as it's up and above and dry like bench type gravel. But uh, this just shows, these illustrations show a couple of ideas of where you might be looking for for uh, plaster gold for dry washing. Now Here's my example. It's a, a kind of a little test that I did. Um, you can see the material on the top and the material on the lower right. That's what I got with my dry washer. And as an experiment, I took the material, uh, the, the tailings, and then put them in buckets and carried them down. Unfortunately, this was a, a good ways in. and uh, I, But I carried the buckets down to my truck and carried the buckets in the truck, the bed of the truck, to the nearest water, which was, I don't know, six or eight miles away. But there was water there six or eight miles away. And, and so I took the tailings and ran the tailings through my sluice box 
and the material on the lower left is all that I got out of processing the tailings with my sluice. And you can see I got most of the gold with the dry washer. And in fact, I did some calculations and the little bit additional that I got was only 3%. It was only a 3% improvement, which is nothing. It was certainly not worth carrying all those buckets down and uh, going down to the water and, and testing it out. But it was worth it for science. So I could know, you know, what uh, could have good confidence. And, and you guys should too, that your, your dry washer, unless there's really a lot of clods and clay, your dry washer is probably getting pretty good recovery. Uh, dry washers work well with metal detectors. Metal detectors cover so much ground. I use my metal detector to explore, to explore around and find hot spots. And then if I find a, a nice patch, I'll bring in my dry washer to finish it up. Here's an example of that. This was a, a productive nugget patch that I found in 2014. In the range of the camera, a little bit off to the lower right and uh, up a little bit further than the top upper um, left, I got probably more than 50 nuggets out of there. And I dug it up and, I, and as I worked it, I kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller pieces. I thought, you know what? I should just dry wash it. The gravel isn't that deep. The gravel here was really at its thickest was maybe a foot deep and most of it was less than that. So I dry washed this whole area and it became a really good dry washing spot. Here's the results. On the right are the nuggets I got by metal detecting. On the left is all the fine gold and, and a few nuggets that I apparently missed with my dry washer. All the fine gold and, and, small, and some of the nuggets that I got by dry washing that same area. I mean, I literally doubled the amount of gold I got by dry washing. Pretty cool. Uh, here was an, here's another interesting example of stuff you need to know. This was a productive nugget patch from uh, 2015. And I dry washed the spot where most of this gold came from. And I really only got a few extra penny weight by dry washing. But hey, a few penny weight, that ain't bad. And it wasn't that much material. But one of the tricks of it was, you know, when you get done, if you have a metal detector and a dry washer, when you get done digging your dry wash hole, you want to be sure to get in there and metal detect the walls of the hole and the base of the hole because you might miss something. And sure enough, just beyond the walls of this hole, that just a little bit farther than where I dug, I found a one-tenth of an ounce and a nearly half ounce size piece that I had, would have left behind if I wouldn't have detected the walls. And in fact, the half ounce piece was out so far that I could barely hear it. And I wasn't even sure if I was just hearing ground noise. And so I, I dug some more into the wall and yeah, sure enough, there was definitely a target out there and I kept digging and wow, it was, it was nearly half an ounce of gold that I would have a really nice nugget that I would have left behind if I would have just filled the hole in without testing it with my metal detector before I moved on. So always check your holes when you're done dry washing with your metal detector. Here's another uh, patch that I found that was found in 2016. Uh, there was a detector hole that yielded six nuggets in one little hole about two feet in diameter. And so I got in there and dry washed it and I got an additional eight penny weight, which is four tenths of an ounce. It's pretty good uh, just by getting in there and dry washing that spot. Now, Arizona, California, and Nevada are all great for dry washing. There's places in New Mexico and, and even other places, uh, probably in Oregon and in the eastern part of the state where it's dry. There may be some in Idaho, too. Again, the issue is not whether it's truly desert or not. It's just whether the material is dry enough. And in fact, uh, one of the things I want to note for you guys is that there are some hard rock mine dumps that have enough free gold to make it worthwhile to dry wash them. The vast majority are not. They're not worthwhile to dry wash. But it does occasionally come that you'll have parts of mine dumps or, you know, small little areas that you can work with a dry washer and do pretty well. So 
that's an idea to keep in mind if you're in an area where there's some real rich hard rock material. Another uh, placer deposit that uh, you should look at is bench gravels. This is the bench up above a modern stream. And you can see there's rounded gravel in, in the wall of the material. This is just a patch of gravel that got stranded up above when the river eroded down as it cuts down in its bed. And the material that's in place, it's virgin. It's never been worked before. You know, that material that's been there has been there since the river laid it down, you know, thousands of years ago. So along, along bedrock there and uh, uh, in those gravels is a, a good place to consider dry washing. It's also a good place to consider metal detecting. Uh, research books can help you find new locations. You know, here's a book, Gold Placers and Plastering in Arizona and Placer Mining in Nevada. There's books about gold districts of California and other places as well. And these can help give you good ideas about new places to get out and explore. And of course, I do a significant amount of dry washing in some of the California gold country. You can see all the trees around me. This is up in a forest, but in the summertime in California, especially uh, up in the northern Sierra, a lot of times they'll have long periods of time where they don't have any rain and the surface uh, gravel dries out. And so it's suitable for dry washing. And this is a place, these were, uh, this is two different places, but they're not very far apart, uh, that I had found nuggets with my metal detector. And so I went in there and dry washed and did pretty well. Got some nice additional gold in addition to the nuggets that I found. So there's lots of places to get out there and explore, both with your metal detector and, and then dry washer to finish off any patches you find. Um, there's just a lot of areas out there, so get out there and explore. Um, I want to uh, talk a little bit about my book. I have a book called Fistful of Gold. It's basically an encyclopedia of everything you need to know about your own um, how to dig your own gold, how to find your own gold. It's all about panning and sluicing, nugget detecting, dry washing, gold geology. It, it, it's 350 pages of detailed information and photos. It's basically, you know, I got started prospecting 40 years ago, and this is all the stuff I wish I knew when I was getting started. And even into stuff that I've learned in the, the last 10 years, you know, it, it, it's not just for new guys. It, it has a lot of detailed information that even experienced prospectors will find useful. And it's available now on Amazon. Just uh, go to Amazon and put in Fistful of Gold by Chris Ralph, and I guarantee it'll come up. And then uh, for more free information about gold and gemstones, check out my webpage. Uh, my webpage is, you can see the, the URL there. It's uh, nevadaoutbackgems.com, uh, prospect, chrisprospect.htm. And I have this encyclopedia of prospecting. It has a whole lot of information. Uh, basically, it's a lot of stuff that uh, didn't fit in my 350-page encyclopedia. So there's a lot of additional information here. And, of course, that's accessible for free. So I hope you have great luck with your prospecting, and I hope everything goes well for you. Uh, Hope to see you out in the field and go out and find yourself some gold.